In this video, we'll talk about the differences between gastric ulcers and duodenal ulcers. Peptic ulcer disease results from the damage to the gastric or duodenal mucosa caused by an impaired mucosal defense mechanisms or an increased acidic gastric contents. These are solitary mucosal ulcers involving the proximal part of the duodenum or the distal stomach. So what are the risk factors of peptic ulcer disease? A major risk factor is H. pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori will stay in the stomach or the duodenum and hydrolyzes urea to produce ammonia, which in return neutralizes the gastric acid. So because of that, gastrin secretion is stimulated. The continuous stimulation of gastrin secretion will disrupt the mucosal layers, making it more susceptible to acid damage. Other risk factors are alcohol, smoking, male gender, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. In non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they inhibit the COX-1 enzymes, and in return, there's a reduction of prostaglandin. Because of that, there's an increased secretion of gastric acid. Peptic ulcer disease is classified into gastric ulcers and duodenal ulcers. It's very important to differentiate between these two types. The gastric ulcers are rarely malignant, but they are considered as malignancy until proven otherwise, whereas duodenal ulcers are almost always considered as non-malignant. When we are talking about the location of the ulcer, gastric ulcers are usually located in the lesser curvature of the stomach, and duodenal ulcers are located in the first part of the duodenum. Gender-wise, both males and females are affected equally in gastric ulcer, but in duodenal ulcer, there's a male predominance. Both types of ulcers are common in patients who are aged more than 50 years. The causative factor behind gastric ulcers are due to the breakdown of defense mechanisms, but in duodenal ulcers, it's because of increased acid secretion. So in duodenal ulcers, there's high acid secretion, whereas in gastric ulcers, they can have normal or low acid secretion. When you do a diagnostic endoscopic biopsy, it will show the ulcers with hypertrophy of the Brunner glands in duodenal ulcers. Patients with duodenal ulcers tend to gain weight as they eat to relieve the pain. And this classic pain of duodenal ulcers occurs 2-5 to five hours after a meal and usually at night. Duodenal ulcers are almost always due to H. pylori infection and a very less amount can be due to Sollinger-Ellison syndrome. In gastric ulcers, around 75% is usually due to H. pylori infection and the rest is due to acid reflux and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. When we are talking about the patient presentation, patients with gastric ulcers present with an epigastric pain which is worsened with meals and relieved by vomiting. But in duodenal ulcers, this epigastric pain will improve with the meals and the pain can be radiated to the back. And that's why the patients with duodenal ulcers tend to gain weight. Gastric ulcers can erode into the left gastric artery, splenic artery or the pancreas and this would result in torrential bleeding. And this is a quite severe complication. The duodenal ulcers can present in the anterior duodenum or the posterior duodenum. And the posterior wall duodenal ulcers can cause bleeding from the gastroduodenal artery and the anterior wall duodenal ulcers can perforate. With that being said, that's the end of this video about differentiating between gastric and duodenal ulcers. Thank you for watching. You can support my channel by simply clicking the like button, commenting and subscribing. And I'll see you again next week with another interesting video.